to present our final award for the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the mayor of the District of Columbia, Muriel Bowser. Well, good evening, everybody. So to all the teachers, administrators, and staff of DCPS, thank you for the work that you do for our children each and every day. Thank you for being here tonight. Your presence here demonstrates what DCPS is all about. Challenging students, inspiring their imaginations, helping our young people beat the odds, excel, and be all that they can be. I want to thank the Public Education Fund for 10 years of being an outstanding partner to DCPS. Let's give them a big round of applause. I also want to thank our Chancellor Antoine Wilson. His, give him a big round of applause. His lovely wife, Teresa, Deputy Mayor Jennifer Niles, and all of the city council members, members of the State Board of Education, and so many people who have been supporting us and believing us in all of our efforts to invest in public education in Washington, D.C. I'm simply thrilled to be here tonight to help you celebrate. My heart was literally jumping up and down to see how excited you were to celebrate with Wyclef Jean, and why not? He is an outstanding entertainer, but also like us, a believer in what public education can do for all of our children. Your leadership means that students are prepared to lead, that they are going to be successful young adults, they will have what it takes to open businesses, start families, and build new pathways to the middle class for themselves right here in Washington, D.C. Tonight, it is my honor to help you celebrate the recipients of the Rubenstein Award for Highly Effective Leadership to eight extraordinary assistant principals and principals. Steve Apparelli, Truesdale Education Campus Assistant Principal. Donald Bryant, Starter Elementary School, Principal. Kermit Burks, Noyes Elementary School, Assistant Principal. John Burst, School Within a School, Principal. Jennifer Green, Key Elementary School, Assistant Principal. Lisa Rosado, Turner Elementary School, Assistant Principal. Mary Ann Stinson, Truesdale Education Campus, Principal. And Kennard Branch, Garfield Elementary School Principal, who could not join us here this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, honor our highly effective assistant principals and principals. Give them a great round of applause. Thank you. I've also been given the great honor of introducing tonight's award to the Principal of the Year. And I'm honored to have known this woman for quite a long time, all my years in public service. Tania Pritchard lives by one guiding principle. She says frequently, start where you are, but don't stay there. Her colleagues will tell you that she can always be found reading books or taking classes, spreading her love of learning to everyone she meets. At one point, Tania was participating in the Georgetown Executive Master's Program. She was also pursuing her doctorate at Bowie State University and leading development groups uh, for the district, all while making tremendous strides as the principal of the Whittier Education Campus. All of this might seem daunting to some or even crazy, but Tania, 
really likes to set expectations high for her teachers, for her students, and also for herself. This DC Public Schools graduate is hands-on in her approach to leadership. She will often say, I don't run my school like I'm a principal. I'm still a teacher, just with a bigger classroom. And let's take a look at this outstanding, incredible leader and lifelong learner. I want every child to come to school feeling that they are a part of something greater than themselves and be able to do whatever it is that they want to do in life. My leadership philosophy is you start where you are, but you don't stay there. And it comes from an African proverb. All of us may come from different places. We may come with different skills, but we don't have to remain there. So what are you working on? I want to create a school where all children, no matter where you come from, you can achieve at high levels. Ms. Pritchard was my third grade teacher. She was someone who took the time to listen. It meant a lot for me to have a teacher that cared. She genuinely believes in her staff and she creates a sense of family that pushes us to our optimal ability. She really helped me understand the importance of taking ownership of my own learning. If the principal of the year can commit to learning every day, <laughs> I better commit to learning every day. She's working on multiple master's degrees and her doctorate degree, and she's a principal. Like, what? Her dedication <laughs> speaks volumes. Out of so many tremendous leaders that we have in DCPS, you are being honored as our 2018 Standing Ovation DCPS Principal of the Year. It is my mission to make sure that students that I service receive the same opportunities that I received as a child in DC Public Schools. When I think about my own children and the type of person I would want to lead my children's teachers, I think about Ms. Pritchard. She knows how to have fun but she also knows how to lead. She has an innate ability to recognize the skills and the talents in each individual student and also their vulnerabilities. And she's able to bring out the strengths and the talent. Yeah, that okay. is a gift. Hello, how are you? If you identify your passion, then you will never have to work another day of your life. So I don't look at this as work. I enjoy what I do. Ms. Pritchard. Ms. Pritchard, you're the principal of the year. Let's congratulate her. in the nation's capital and graduated from DC Public Schools and labeled. <laughs> I was labeled an at-risk student. This label allowed me to re receive free and reduced lunch, attend college, and was accompanied with the host of stereotypes. Uh, many thought that a little black girl from the southeastern quadrant of the District of Columbia would be a victim of her circumstances. What society did not know is that I grew up in a household that instilled core values and gave me the strength, courage, and resiliency to do some of the things that society thought was statistically impossible. My grandmother was a leader of my tribe and extremely influential in my passion to pursue a career in education. I recall stories of how racist Jim Crow laws minimized her opportunities and how poverty uh, forced her family to choose between eating or being educated. My grandmother would vividly describe the day she would cry because she could not go to school. These conversations I had with my grandmother lit a fire in me that cannot be extinguished. 
I refuse to stop learning because I'm going to school for two people. I'm going to school for me and my grandmother. I am obsessed with that very right that she was denied. I often hear catch phrases, phrases such as, education is the great equalizer. And I think to myself, it could be if every child had equal access. I also hear that every citizen in this country has the opportunity to, to achieve success and prosperity through hard work, determination, and initiative, also known as meritocracy or the American dream. And again, I think to myself, minorities in America work hard as hell, and some of them still haven't moved up to the east side to their deluxe apartment in the sky. You see, the American dream did not exist for my grandmother, and it doesn't exist for every child in America today. It does not exist for children who are victims of de facto segregation, culturally irrelevant curriculums, disparity in school funding, inadequate health care, and unjust immigration laws. The American dream doesn't exist the American dream doesn't exist for black and Hispanic boys who are disproportionately sent to the main office, suspended, expelled, and referred to special education, which later results in mass incarceration. You see, one man's dreams is another man's nightmares. The evolution of racism has called us to develop blind, blind spots which questions its existence. Just as we have made advancements in technology, we also have become savvier in our tactics of oppression. In the words of James Baldwin, that as one becomes conscious, one begins to examine the society which he is being educated. And upon investigation, I have discovered that society has failed children of color. I believe that it is my responsibility to fight for social justice and education. I believe that America still owes my grandmother a piece of the American pie. The blood, sweat, and tears of my ancestors and the hardships that they faced to help build this country will not be in vain. The tears that my grandmother cried because she could not attend school will be wiped away as I fight to ensure that every child has the opportunity that she was denied. The future of our democracy is dependent upon every child receiving a high quality education. Every child in America should be able to read at levels where they can analyze, critique, and comprehend bogus legislation that is often passed in their honor. My journey will not end until this dream comes to fruition. And in the words of Mary McLeod Bethune, for I am my mother's daughter, and the drums of Africa still beat in my heart. They will not let me rest while there's a single nigger boy or girl un without a chance to prove their worth. Thank you.